let's talk about Java arrays. So arrays. Let's say you you're writing an application uh, and you want to keep the student grades, and there's a lot of students. So you can say, well, the grade for the first student is 99, the grade for the second student is going to be 88, grade for the third student is going to be 99, and so on. But th this is annoying, right? Because now you have all these variables, name grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, and so forth. And now say, what if you wanted to print them all out? Uh, you would have to print one, and then the other one, and then the next one. And it's very annoying. There's a lot of code there. So we don't want to do that. Bye-bye. Mm, no. What you want to do is you have you want to grade array, which you declare like that. And um, then we initialize it. We say it's going to be new int. And let's say we're going to have 10 students. And right, so you have a, a grade array with 10 students. Um, so this is how we do it, it's int, the type, then the square bracket with nothing in there. It's hard to see, so it's the left square bracket, right square bracket, what we're doing there. Um, then the variable name, then you say new, and then the type, and then how many do you want in there. So once you have the grade array, you can say, okay, the grade number zero, that's going to be, you know, whatever you want. It just has to be an integer, right? Grade number one is going to be whatever. Grade two is going to be whatever I want. Um, this number inside the bracket, we call that the index. Right? And then the index has to range, always starts at zero and goes to you know one minus this number. So in this case, it's going to go from zero to nine. Uh, there are 10 items, and they're numbered 0 through 9, 0, 1, 2. So that's the array, and uh, oops. once we have that, then, you know, I can just print out grade, uh, let's say I'll go with grade 2. I run that, it prints out 99. So you see, I'm just printing out the second grade, which was 99. Uh, that's your grade. I uh, it doesn't, of course, it doesn't have to be just integers. I can make arrays of any type, right? So I can have a, a double, uh, double array, it's a new double of thousand, whatever. Uh, and also, I can use not just primitive types, but I can use any type. Um, so I can have names, for example. Oops, I forgot the brackets here. That's very common, you know. We tend to forget the brackets. I know I do. So let's say there's an array of 10 strings, names, and I can say then, you know, name, well, I'll probably could call it name. Name zero is Bob. Name one is going to be, say, Alice. And so forth. Um, so that's how you would use the string, right? See, it's the same thing. And then, you know, I can print them out. I'll print name one, and that will print out Alice, right? Okay, so uh, what else? Um, normally, let's say I have a grade three, which is 100, and uh, I want to print all these grades out. You know, let's say I had 10 grades, I want to print them all out. How do I do that? We use for loops, right? So our arrays and for loops go together like peanut butter and jelly. So while i is less than grade.length, i++, plus plus, and let's, I'm just going to print out grade i. All right, so here I'm writing a little loop. i is going to go from 0 to the grade dot length. So the length is a variable, a member variable. That's, it is associated with the array. And it returns whatever length was used to declare that array. So in this case, grade dot length is going to return 10 
because we defined, declared this array to have 10 items in it. Uh, and so what this is going to do is it's going to go through i0, it's going to print grade 0, grade 1, grade 2, etc. So I can run that. You see that's what it did. It printed all of these out. Now notice that when it got to 4, right, it printed 0, 0, 0. Uh, and that is because when you create an array, or, and if it's an array of numbers, all the numbers are by default set to 0 in Java. Uh, if it was an array of strings, uh, or any other object that is not a number, um, they will get set to null. So for example, I can print out uh, name five, right? I haven't set five, so I can run this. You see, prints null at the end. Because name five is set to null. Uh, and I think to keep in mind is, uh, okay, what if I, um, I say grade, what about grade 10, right? So I try to print out grade 10. As I said, the indices only go from 0 to 9, so when I try to print grade 10, I run that, it crashes. It's going to tell me Java language array index out of bounds exception. The index, being this number, is out of bounds. The bounds are always between 0 and 1 minus the size, the, the number of items. Or, so between 0 and 9, 10 is outside that bound, so it's out of bounds. So the program will crash. If you do that, so don't do that. The same if you have a negative number, again, it crashes because the first number is always zero. So negative numbers are out of bounds. Uh, that's also why when you do this thing here, you have to remember this is going to be less than, if you put less than or equal, you run it, it will crash uh, because i is now 10 and grade 10 doesn't exist. Um, Another type of for loop, because this kind of stuff that I'm doing here uh, is done a lot, um, we will also use this type of for loop. Uh, like this. So, um, let me, uh, Whoops. Let me comment this out here. So I have this for loop here. I can run that and you see it works. It prints out all the numbers, 88, 99, etc. And uh, so this is just another way of writing this loop in the same way. So all, all it's doing is going through the grade array and picking the first grade as G. And we print that G in this case. And then next time through the loop, it's going to get the second or grade one, then grade two, grade three, grade four, all the way to the end. Uh, and that's what it's doing. So uh, this is generally preferred uh, when all you have, all you, rather than this one, right? So if all you have to do is go through the array and get the each value, then you want to do it this way because this other way, you know, you have this i variable that you're, um, well, you don't really need, as you can see here. I, I did this whole thing without i, so it just makes things easier. However, there are cases when you do need the i variable, and uh, let's bring this guy back in line and say if you did want to print out the index, right? So if I wanted to do something like this. 1 equals like that. So you see, I want to print out grade 0 is 88, grade 1 is 89. Uh, I cannot do that with this guy, this other loop, because there's no i. So uh, one final thing, one little thing, is that uh, Java also has array literals. So, um, and you know, instead of doing this, it's a the grades were fixed. This is this is rare, right, for an array. But say we need an array with fixed grades. Uh, I could do this. So I can put in whatever numbers I want here. Those and now uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this. So now when I print this, 
it's going to print out that array. So array index 0 is 55. You see 55. Array index 1 is 66, 66. So we call this an array literal because literally the values are these. These are literally the values for this array. Uh, so it, uh, this is especially useful in debugging and writing test cases. In a real program, most of the values for an array will be read either from the user or from a file. 